Hey guys, Baba Ganoush here. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how I record my guitars into Ableton using very, very low latency. And the reason why I do that is because, um, to put into context, I, I'll have a template available that's just chock full of third party plugins. You know, it's got a whole bunch of stuff on there. And when you have a whole bunch of plugins on there, if you want to go ahead and record guitar tracks over it, uh, you know, on top of your drum samples, your bass samples, and all that good stuff, it's going to add a good amount of latency on there because Ableton, the way it works is it wants to go ahead and process all of the plugins that are available, even if you disable it. Uh, that way you can always have, you know, uh, uncompromised sound when it comes to playing with the instruments live. It's kind of the way Ableton set up. So... Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So here is a project I have here, and basically this is kind of like my uh, my template project. So I'll show you guys what I have here. I'm running a, a GGD drums, a get good drums over here with a contact player. Um, I have it routing into a drum bus over here that's just f full of all kinds of plugins. I got you know waves limiters. I got fat filters stuff. I got all kinds of stuff running through. The individual channels for kick, snare, hi hat, all the symbols, you name it. And then going into, let me go ahead and minimize this. And then going into my my guitars over here, I got two guitar tracks, one heavy pan left, one heavy pan right, and I'm just go running the uh, the new old DSP Fortin Nameless on both of those, and that's going into a guitar bus that's full of. Uh, uh, you know, a multi-band compressor, regular compressor, and some EQ. For now, I have the uh, the multi-band compressor uh, disengaged for this specific track. I also got a bass sampler here. That's It has a contact library with uh, another Fort Nameless plugin running through it. So it just got all kinds of stuff. I got some stuff on my mastering chain too, some limiters and SSL compressors and whatnot. So no matter what you do with the settings in your live settings, if you turn the samples all the way down, you're going to get a little bit of latency as you're trying to monitor your guitars while recording it. So you can set this down to 128 or 64 and it's not going to really matter because you know all the third party plugins are going to bog everything down. So first let me show you guys what that sounds like. Uh, what I'll go ahead and do over here is I'm going to go ahead and record a track. Let me go ahead and set the, the noise compressor on here because it's off. Cool. And you know what? I can give you guys some context. So let me put the microphone down on my guitar and kind of pay attention to when I strum the guitar. And then when you hear the sound going from the strum of the natural guitar and what's happening with the DAW over here. And you can tell that it is a little bit of a latency occurring. Check this out. Okay, hopefully you guys were able to hear that. But in even more context, let me show you guys what happens to the track if I go ahead and try to record these guitars with the monitoring enabled here. And what I mean by this, in case you guys don't know what these settings are. So basically this is your monitoring settings here. Basically in is, uh, even if you have the record enabled off, it's gonna kind of show you the signal that's coming into the channel. In this case, it's my guitar. Um, auto basically will mean that it'll work only if you have it record enabled okay and generally what people do is they usually set these either to in or auto it just depends on your preference for now I'll leave it on auto and let me show you guys how I used to record these guitars for now I'm gonna go ahead and just follow along to the song and, and play a few uh, play a few bars of it so you guys can see what's going on check this out All right, we'll just stop that there. And let's take a look at the waveform and let's see how this was recorded. Now, as you can see, these little transients right here, uh, we'll take a look at this one. It's supposed to line up with this bass hit right over here, but as you can tell, it's a little delayed. And that's because of all the, the compensation that your third party plugins is adding into your monitoring when it comes to your guitar. So this thing is just, 
it's extremely delayed. So, here is the solution I found to this. Now, let's go and delete that track. Now, if you go over here, uh, you see that it has the option for off. And now what off is, is basically it's going to go ahead and bypass um, the monitoring of your plugins and, and the processing of what's going on. So if I play it right now, you're not going to really hear anything, right? Which could be a problem when it comes to you trying to track down this, this guitar right now. So what my solution is, what I like to do is I like to go to the neural plugin that I have set up here. and open the uh, standalone version in the background. And what you do is you go ahead and match all the settings that you have here with whichever is going with whatever is going on in your project. So in this case like for example sake we'll just run the default preset and maybe with some slight tweaking and we'll kind of go ahead and match it with the standalone. As you can tell the standalone is working just fine. So what I'll do is, I'll leave this running in the background, and what I'll do is I'll record what's going on in my DAW with the monitoring on the off position. And let's just see what that looks like so I can show you guys. All right, cool. And let's take a look at what happened what happened to our waveform now. And as you can see, look at the transients. Look how beautifully they lined up now with this down hit matching exactly where the bass sample MIDI hit is. Right over here too, as well as over here. Now everything's lined up correctly. And the beauty of it is, you don't have to change anything in your monitoring now. You could just go ahead and play your track and you're gonna hear it process through your plugins. And it's perfectly aligned. Now, albeit the only caveat that you're going to run into is that while you're monitoring the standalone plugin in the background, you're not going to be able to hear it with a left or right pan. Well, actually, you could if you really want to. You could just go to the cap section and whatever cabinets you have on engage, you could just hard pan them all the way left. And now you can hear it. So let, here, here's a good example. So we just recorded the left guitar. So what we can do is we can pan all the, all these. Uh, I could pan the uh, guitar cabs all the way to the right, minimize it, come over here, record enable this, and go ahead and set it to off. And now you're going to be able to hear the right pan guitar along with the already panned left guitar in your DAW. So let's see what this sounds like. All right, cool. And again, as you can tell, with the way I do this, it is perfectly aligned. You're not gonna get any input latency whatsoever. And as usual, if you just push play, and there you go. So yeah, depending on where you want to pan it, you can just go ahead and do all the way left, all the way right. doesn't really matter. You just leave a standalone version in the back running. And that's how I go ahead and record my guitars into Ableton with no latency. Thank you guys. Take care.